Hey, welcome back, guys. So in this one, we're going to be talking about quite a number of things. One is we're going to work on our folder structure, making sure make sure we are structuring things really well. And then we're going to see an alternative way to set up an app by using factory functions. And also, we're going to be taking a look at the Flask env and how to manage environment variables. So over here, what we did was we created an instance of our app by just setting it to Flask. And then we are using this app almost everywhere so we could go ahead here and we connect our app to like a database and all that stuff but that approach will have some drawbacks because that way we may not be able to easily test our application what we are going to do now is we are going to set it up in a way that it can accept different configurations depending on how it is being run so over here i'm going to start by creating a few files and folders so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to create an src folder so the src folder will host all our application code so all the code we write will go in the src folder so over here i'm going to move this up of course now to the src because now all our application code will be here and then over here i'm going to create some other folders one is going to be the config folder so the config folder will host all the boilerplate configuration for the different modules we are going to be working with so also i'm going to create another folder here called constants so inside here we can have some constants for example some variables that we don't want them so we don't want to change across our apps for example the status code so i'm just gonna create here status codes dot by file already so i'm actually gonna prefix it with http just so we don't confuse that and then the other folder i'm gonna create here is the static and the templates folder so these we can use them if you wanted to show like a web page maybe a welcome page it would need us to have like some css so we'll put it in here let me also have some templates so in the templates we can have some html if we needed to so also i'm going to create a services folder so in the services let's say we wanted to send an email to the user when they sign up we could have like an email service inside there so one thing i'm going to do is outside the src i'm going to create a, a tests folder so i'm going to have tests there so if we wanted to write some unit tests or some other types of tests, we would put them in there. And now in the source, this is where we're going to create our factory function, the one that is going to set up our app. So over here, I'm going to create a dunder init file. So this is the file. You can think of this as the default file. So whenever we're importing from source, we don't have to put dunder init. Every time we import from source, this is going to be imported automatically. So over here, we're going to have a function that's going to be responsible to create our app, set up some configurations, and then return it to us, depending on how we intend to call that function. So this function is going to be called create app. Now, this function is going to be taking in a, a config. Now, the common two cases that I find when writing apps is when you have to configure it for, for testing or when you want to, to use it as a user. So over here, when we call it, we're going to be passing it a test config. So I'm going to set it to none by default. So over here now we can create our app that just like the way we did it in app. So let's import this. Actually, let's just import all this because we're going to need to do the same thing. I always love to have all my imports on top, although with Python, you can have them anywhere. So we're going to have app equals flask. And then I'm going to pass in another argument here. And that argument is going to be instance relative config. So instance relative config and then we're going to set that one to true and that just tells flask that we might have some configurations that are going to be defined in some files outside here so now that we have that then we can go ahead and check if we are running in testing or if we have some testing config so we can say if testing is none we can go ahead and, and configure our app now one thing i'm going to configure quickly is the secret key so over here we can do app.config then we want to do from mapping. So when we do from mapping, then we can pass in our configurations. So for now, I'm going to set the secret key. So I'm going to do secret key. And then I'm going to set that one to Dave for now. And then later, I'm going to be showing you how to use environment variables to pull this one in. If we wanted to like set up a database or maybe configure our app to use our app to work with another module, we'll be doing that in, the, in this block. But if the test config is defined, then we are going to go ahead and have an else here and then we are going to be running our app using that configuration so we can do app.config.from mapping and then we can use the one that we passed in when we created our app we need to return our app so we can return app like this now in the app.py since we have these functions of ours right now we have another instance of our app so we are going to clear this one away and to keep things working over here in our app we are going to have this defined so let's push them in here 
So we can have the at index and this and the at error. And now we need to tell Flask to now use this file as our main app entry point. So I'm going to stop the server and run export Flask app. And then we can. So now we are going to set our new path, which is in SRC. So we can do Flask app equals SRC. And now if we run back our app, Flask run, you can see that our server is still on. And when we come over here, you can see that we still have our hello world. And we can still go back to slash hello and get the message so which is good one thing you must have noticed is i had to update flask in the terminal by setting the path to the flask app again what happens is whenever we want to run let's say flask run in another terminal let's, now let's say we wanted to run this app in a new terminal so i'm gonna go to a new one a fresh one so if we do flask run over here it doesn't look at the Flask application. So instead of us having to go ahead repeating this, set, setting the Flask app, setting the environment, every time we have a new terminal session, what we can do is we can create a special file called .flaskenv. So in the .flaskenv file, then we can have all our configurations, the one we are setting from the terminal. So let's set the environment. So export .flaskenv equals development. Let's also set the Flask app. So export .flask underscore app. Then this is going to be SRC. And now if we come back to a new terminal session, in fact, I'm going to create a new one. And now if we do flask run, you notice that they tell us that there is a .env or a flaskenv file. And for flask to be able to work with this new file, we need to have python.env installed. So I'm going to copy this command here and uh, run that in our environment just so we can get it installed. So it's going to go ahead and install that. So when it's done and we run back our flask, Notice that now our application starts and it picks up the config. So it's now using development and we don't have to actually go ahead and set these ones again every time we are rerunning it in a new terminal session. So that's how you do that. One thing I want to say about the .flask .env file is that uh, .flask .env file is not a replacement for a .env file. So in the .flask .env file, we can have some configurations that we might be free to even push to version control. Now also we might have some files that we might not want to push to version control. And those we can put them in a .env file. So I'm gonna create a .env file. So here I'm gonna have export secret key. And we are gonna talk more about secret keys in a few. And now here where we set up our application with the secret key, instead of us using this hard-coded one, I'm going to use an OS module to read from the, the current .env. So I'm gonna import OS here, so import OS. And over here, then we can set this one to os.env environment. Then we can do get. Then we can get the key. So our key is secret key. So we can make sure that we are getting that secret key. So that's how you get started with application factory functions and also how to work with environment variables. So if the video helps you out, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll talk to you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.